so I'm excited to get into another week of it. I thought last week was fun. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah? Yeah. All right, well, you want to start it off? You just want to pick out a random question and go from there. What's your favorite cheesy pickup line? My favorite cheesy pickup line? Uh, one would be, you know, Paul told everybody to greet one another with a holy kiss. Um, okay. No, maybe not. Okay. That's fine. Um, mine is... Is it hot in here or is that just the Holy Spirit burning inside of you? Wow. That's correct. <laughs> the Holy Spirit burning inside of me is like a fire. So, that's yeah. also good news. Okay. What about, let me give you another one. How about, um, so you've been, you've been, I gotta get my form, obviously. Every guy has a form and I'm about to use a pickup line. You've been, uh, you've been running sprints during this quarantine or something? No, why? Because you've been running through my mind all day. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, I have one more. Alright. Um, well, I gotta get that. Uh -oh. I'm walking. I left. <laughs> she stuttered. Okay, listen. Don't got time listen, for that. Listen, here it is. Here it is. Okay, I'm here now. What's your other two wishes? Ah, uh, like you're a genie. Alright, let's move on. No, no, no. On. Like, I was your first wish. Oh, like I wish for you and I have two more. Yeah, now you have two more wishes. Okay, gotcha. Well, there you go. There's a couple for you guys. Um, don't worry, really actually. These are. What is the most courageous thing that you have ever done? Most courageous thing I've ever done? Start a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's not the most courageous thing I've done. The most courageous thing I've done is I left my, my dream, my childhood dream from age 5 to age 18. So most of my life, actually, I mean, yeah, most of my life, I left the, the collegiate career of soccer. Uh, I got a scholarship to go play soccer in Philly um, and I felt like I actually talked to Pastor Drew our lead pastor now and he's like hey man I think there's a call to ministry on your life um, but that's not going to happen in Philly right like that's you're, you're called here I believe and there's an opportunity for you so are you going to take that opportunity or are you going to continue to follow your childhood dream and you know I struggle with that and um, through a lot of prayer, honestly, and a lot of talk with wise people that were positive influences on my life, I decided, hey, I'm leaving. I left the collegiate career of soccer, one of my favorite things, and pursued a life of ministry, and I wouldn't change it. And that's why I'm here today talking to you guys, because of that one courageous step, right? Um, and a lot of steps along the way, but nonetheless, that was probably the most courageous I've done. What about you? What's the most courageous thing you've done? Um... I think that probably the most courageous was there was a guy that I did for a long time and mm -hmm. I, I heard pretty clearly from God multiple times that like, if I didn't need to be with him, I need to break up with him and I think that was hard because I was really comfortable um, in that relationship, um, you know, you just get comfortable in everyday life and so I didn't want to break up with him, I thought that I could kind of you know, help lead him into a walk with God and lead him into the guy that I wanted. And and then I, I saw the type of guy that I did want and um, just having to pull myself away from that and <laughs> try and move towards something that I knew that God was calling me to. Um, it was hard, so it took a lot of me. And I didn't want to hurt anyone, so also that. So I think that was probably the most courageous thing I've had to do. Mm. Yeah, because it calls you to sacrifice your place of, of comfort, of security. You might think, oh, I'll never find another guy, so I might as well stay with this one, or yeah. different things like that. Yeah, and like we had all our friends were all in the same groups, mm -hmm. and so not only was I breaking up with a guy, but I was kind of messing up our groups, and just, you know, my schedule, and I like schedule, so it was a yeah. big thing for me, so... Yeah. yeah, hey, talk to your, your family, your friends, whatever. Just ask them, hey, what's the most greatest thing you've done? Because it's kind of cool how it starts a conversation even between us and between you guys of just what that looks like. So thankful for that uh, question submitted as well. Uh, let me grab this next one. What is the best season to be quarantined in? The best season to be quarantined in. I personally think winter already is a quarantine in itself. We stay inside. We go to school. And we don't go outside. No, so there's so already a quarantine. So, I mean, I might lean towards that because it's already set up for me. Like, that's the system, and I like systems. So I might have to say winter. What do you think? I think I think right now, like, the spring is the best time. 
mm. to be quarantined because you know, I get like rainy days where I don't have to get out of bed if I don't want to. But then also like today, like it's beautiful outside. So like if I wanted to go out and do stuff, I could out in like my yard and stuff, obviously, because we're not supposed to be shopping and go to the beach and right. stuff. But like if we were in the summer, I would want to go to the beach mm, and I yeah, couldn't because I'm stuck so. in the house. And in the winter, like I feel like I can't go outside because it's too cold. So then I'm just like stuck inside and I'll go crazy. So yeah, yeah. I think right now is honestly the best time for it to be happening. That's a, that's a good thought. I don't know what you guys think. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You're asking all the questions. I, sorry, I like questions. Asking all these questions. We can speak. Um, it's hard prioritizing my time. I'm always on my phone. I know I need to spend time with God, but I do everything else instead. What should I do? Hmm. Find accountability. I know it's not fun, but having a guy text you or a girl text you, um, say, hey, have you read today? How are you doing that today? And I think to this season, there's a lot of like cons and a lot of uncertainty, but one thing's certain, you can start a new pattern in this season better than any time else, right? Because you are stuck at home. You could learn to play the guitar. You could try and sing. You could write songs, right? I know people. I won't. I don't, I don't do that stuff. I can't sing. Um, but man, even setting up a daily pattern of reading your word, and I don't care if you get up at 12 or 6 a.m. or 2 p.m. It doesn't really matter to me, but as soon as you get up, starting that routine of, hey, I want to I wanna get into my word, and even if it's just a couple scriptures, until you really see like, oh, this is what Jesus has for me today, right? Um, I believe now is the perfect time to do that, and once we get out of this quarantine, um, and get back into schools, we'll already have that habit set up, right? And uh, sometimes that means setting your phone away from you. I do that in the morning. I set it away from me so I don't check Instagram before I go into my Word, right? Because I'm going to fill myself myself up with one or the other. Am I going to fill myself up with comparison, or am I going to fill myself up with what God's telling me to do? And I tell you, it changes your day. It really does. Um, I don't know if you have any helpful hints or stuff that you like to do. I'm a morning guy. That's not the only thing you have to do, though. Yeah, I would just say, like, remember that, like, it has to, it's on you. You know, like, you're getting to an age now, especially middle schoolers, where your parents aren't going to tell you to get up and go brush your teeth. They're not going to tell you to get up and go, you know, I don't know, things like that. And so it's kind of like this is another step into you moving into your own person and your own identity mm. with God, like, also with God. So mm. it has to, you have to remember that it has to be your decision. And so in the morning, you have to decide that you're going to put your phone down or, you know, before you go to bed, you have to decide that you're going to do it. And so um, I think a lot of times maybe we forget that part that we just kind of are assuming it will be natural. Mm. But that's like trying to put in these patterns that Jason's talking about and things like that is not it's not going to be natural. So you have to decide that I'm going to put these patterns in place and then stick to the pattern, you know, and if they, you know, I, I've heard that like try to go to the gym, you know, some, I want to go to the gym, whatever, get there, but mm. they say, like, one way to start creating habits is, you know, for a week, like, just drive to the gym, you know, and so maybe that looks like for the next two days, like, you just get out your Bible, you know, and maybe you don't read it, maybe you just get it out, so then you get into the feel of, like, okay, every morning, I'm touching my Bible before I touch my phone, Yeah. you know, and then, and then the next week, you wow. know, you you've gotten into a habit now of touching your Bible every morning. So now open it, you know, open it and find what you want to read. And you know, maybe you only read for five minutes and then that slowly grows. So don't overwhelm yourself. You know, don't try and like start off one day with like this whole new pattern that you're gonna follow every day because you won't. Mm -hmm. You know, take it slow and um, do slow things. So yeah, get up, hold your Bible every day, you know, and then move on from that. Yeah, that's good. And I think that's huge what she said there. Don't try to do 500 push-ups tomorrow. Yeah. Because you're in quarantine, right? You're gonna you're gonna blow yourself out, and then you're just gonna not want to do any push-ups ever again. That's what happened to me, at least. It's like I'm just gonna I did not do 500. But what she's saying, I think, is so true. Like, even if it means just getting your Bible out and putting it on the table, that's really all it takes, right? Um, just small habits that will start to create even bigger habits. And this is one that I would I would die for, right? Like this is this is something that I would argue to on blue in the face that you need this thing, right? Like you need the Word of God. To be in you a part of your daily life because life is hard especially right now so creating that habit now is amazing maybe you're asking hey which where should i start you know um i think like everyone uh in church i believe where i got started was the gospels that's matthew mark luke john you can look it up in the table of contents um 
And it's just Jesus's story. If anything, it just shows you who Jesus is to people like you and me. Um, so I think that would be a great place to start. And I'm so thankful for the questions. I think Knessa had one. What is it? It was like, if I'm alone. No, you're about to touch right. I was. Am I bored in the house or am I in the house bored? Am I bored in the house or am I in the house bored? Are you bored in the house? I think. What do you TikTok. Think? Have you not heard that? Uh, no, I haven't heard that. Bored in the house or am I in the house bored? <laughs> That's what it is? Well, to answer that that (laughs) trivial question, I think I'm in the house bored because I wasn't bored when I first started in the house, but after sitting there for a while, now I'm bored. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't come to the house bored. You were in the house bored. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Vanessa, thank you. Thank you. Hey, I want to pray this time out just because I believe you guys are amazing and uh, I want to be more intentional about even just praying with you guys. Uh, even through video, right? So if you just bow your heads, close your eyes with me. God, I'm so thankful for the opportunity of technology. I thank you that we can ask questions that we might not ask in a public setting because we're nervous or we believe that people will make fun of us. But I'm thankful for the opportunity you have given us um, to be lights to people. So God, I pray that we would develop small habits to know you better because God, you are Lord over all. God, I can't help but just continue to to hit that verse where you are an ever-present help. I want to live that out every day of my life, even past the quarantine. God, we're so thankful for you. We love you, and we're thankful for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. And all these things I pray, amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for quarantine questions. You'll see this video up. Uh, And tomorrow is going to be our live stream for Monday. Edit it down a little bit. Might not be the best quality first time around, but hey, that's all right. We're getting this thing together. And it is with Pastor Jake from Emmanuel Church. So you would want to check that out. There's some great stuff about relationships. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. This is us tuning off. We love you guys. And you belong. Love you. See you.